welcome back in the previous video we were able to connect our application to redux and it, we, we had this dev extension tool for us automatically so in this video we are going to create an action to log in a user but before that make sure that you are running both the client and then the server at the same time so let me go back one more make sure that i'm at the root of my folder and i can run the script learn watch to run both the client and the server at the same time okay db connected and my front end is also running that is magic so before you proceed let's test our api if it is working right so now i'm um, inside my postman this is what we did in the previous video about the api creation so let me log in from here and make sure that my API is working. Well, we say that invalid login credentials. So maybe I missed, I forgot my password and let's send. And now my API is working. So now let's do this one from the front end. So let's go back to the front end and then start creating our action. Cool. So First and first is let's go to our client folder here, SLC and Redux and make sure that in the slices, that's where you see that it contains both your actions and reduces. So now we are working on the user. So let's create one file and call this one users slices.js. Cool. So what I need is I need to require what is called create async thank. And this is going to help us to make a request to external API. So let's import it from import it from Redux Toolkit at Redux Toolkit. And I need for now create a sync tank. So create a sync tank help us to create an action. Take it like that. Cool. So now that I have it. First, let's have a comment and call this one login, login action. So let's see how we can create an action using Redis Toolkit, right? So function, because we're going to export many functions from this file. We were this user slice, we're going to create our actions for login, register, fetch all users, update and delete on this file only, right? So to export multiple functions from one file we need to export export cons the function and then the name of the function is called login user action like that and it's equal to create async tank and this create async tank it takes two things right one gonna be the action type and this one must be unique throughout the entire page, entire application. So log user login action. So when we display this action, we're able to see it from the dev extension too, right? Cool. All right. Cool. So now we have the second argument. The third argument is gonna be the action, the rare action, the function. So we call this one a callback function here like that and because i want to use await and avoid callback hell i will mark my function as an async okay as an async so let me remove this one from here sorry as an async and this function we have a couple of things we can send to the api so here if you want to send something if you look at the api here if you look at the body here as you can see, let me show you the body here. As you can see, we are sending something to the API and in Redux, you call this one payload, right? So to receive this one, we will receive it inside this first argument and call this one payload, right? And then the next one be, we will destructure a couple of arguments. And first of all, we need what is called reject with value. So reject with value is going to help us to return a user-friendly error, right? So if you look at this, let's look at this one. 
and then let me change this password and then send something so if you don't pass that error to that reject value we are not going to receive this our custom message but instead we are going to receive some message that we don't want that is why reject with values help us to format our error in a user friendly way so the next one going to be get state so get state simply means that if we can get a snapshot of your state inside here so if you console log get state as a function dot store we have all your state in the application and the last one going to be dispatch right so if you have worked with traditional readers before you see this part before we can get this part unless you install reader thank middleware and then we can have this part inside your action so now that we have that in this body of the function let's bring in try and catch like that and then inside here is what we are going to make http call make http http call here okay so the http call i'm going to make is what is our api this api right so let's copy this api and remember that we installed axios so we can use fetch but i axios make it pretty easy than axios sorry fetch okay so here let's make the http call and assign the results to a rest value and let's await that one and because it's a post request and the postman is a post request and i place in my api and the next one gonna be the payload i want to send to the server right to the server this payload to the server so the next is first of all we need to tell the server that hey you, we are sending json data but by default express pass incoming request adjacent data right but it's a good habit to pass it manually as well so because of that here let's add our config so this config is really important here so const config i'll explain to you why we need to pass your configuration here so this config we want to tell our server that hey server what we are sending to you is what we want send only json data right so we pass as a header and send it to the request and here we say our content type is called application slash json so here in future in case we want to protect or make a request to a protected api in our application we need to send a token as part of the header and send to the request so as a third argument to axios we pass in our config and that is it now we have created our action right our action so now let's handle if something goes wrong we are not done yet so let's handle if something goes wrong here so here let's check so if and then if there is no error right and i'm going to use chaining here to avoid using an operator if there is no error all right so this chaining simply means that to avoid using an operator for example if there is no error and there is no error on the response right as you can see it's long syntax so using an operator makes our life easier dot response it means that if there is no error on the there's no error therefore let's throw our custom error throw the error right but if there is error let's format it in a nice way using reject with value so rejected with value and then we pass in our error so if there is error therefore let's grab the response and on the response we have the data and that is it so we are done with the action so let's quickly destructure the actual data here and then come from the response and then let's send to the user data and that is it so we have finished created our action using 
Redux Toolkit. So in the next video, we are going to create a reducer called Slices out of this.